Remember, we're solving these applied optimization problems. We're reading through the problem carefully. We're drawing a picture to help us understand. We're writing variables for the unknown quantities. In particular, we're trying to write an equation for the, the thing we want to optimize, usually either maximize or minimize, find the biggest, find the smallest, something like that. Look for words that indicate some optimal or extreme. Um, now, we're always looking for a constraint if, our, if the equation of what we're trying to optimize depends on multiple variables so that we can get it down to an equation of a single variable. Then we just follow the usual optimization procedure that we'd use for any function. Here's another example. Find the volume of the largest right circular cone that can be inscribed in a sphere of radius 3. Woo! Okay, well, let's draw a picture. We've got a sphere, and we're trying to put a right circular cone inside of that sphere. So the biggest one, its point would have to come up here, right, and be touching. And, and we're going to have this cone. Now you can see the dimensions of the cone will determine the volume. So we could make our cone taller, but we'd have to decrease the radius of the cone. So our, our question is, well, where should we where should, how tall should we make it so that we can get the best possible cone to fit inside of that sphere. But we can see that we want the height to be at least what the radius is, right? So, in fact, we probably can push it even a little bit further, but we know that it's gonna, that the height is gonna be more than just, than just the radius, because if it's, if it's uh, just at the radius, we could always get a bigger cone by pushing it down a little bit. So if I look at a cross section here, then I can see it as a triangle. I'm going to divide this right in half. And we know that the height is going to extend down below that center, probably, to give us optimal area. Okay, definitely at least down as far as the center, because um, if we had the height up here, then certainly we don't have as much volume so let's see this is going to be um, the height which is at least three plus a little extra maybe I'll la label it uh, mm, I guess H but remember that just stands for the extra height um, and then we have our radius here um, is there anything else we can figure out oh we do have a relationship between the amount of extra height and the radius of the cone because from this point at the center out to where the the edge of the cone touches the sphere that's a radius of the sphere so that's got to be three so okay the thing we're trying to optimize is the volume because we want the largest volume right um, and the volume of a cone is uh, one-third pi r squared, which would be this number r here, h. Now the height actually is um, 3 plus h, the way I've labeled this thing. So 1 third pi r squared h. There's the volume of our cone. Notice that depends on two variables, but we have figured that there's a relationship between these because the radius squared plus that extra bit of height squared has got to turn out to be the same thing as 3 squared is 9. This is by the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so I can actually solve for r squared in this problem. r squared is 9 minus h squared. I'm going to plug that in here so that I have a volume as a function of the height alone. So at 1 third pi r squared, where r squared is 9 minus h squared times 3 plus h. Now we know there are actually bounds on h, and we might as well list them. First off, h couldn't be any more than 3, right? We couldn't go any further down than three, we'd have a really tall skinny cone right there. So definitely that's going to give us a small volume, the minimum volume if h equals three. On the other hand, h couldn't go any, h could be negative three, I guess that would mean we're coming up here. So, well really we can tell h needs to not go any more than than zero there. Okay, so we couldn't, if we went any lower then I think we wouldn't have well, I don't know. I guess we could say negative 3 there. Let's see what happens. Uh, if h is negative, then we're up here. Um, but yeah, the radius is still... Yeah, that still works. Our, our equation is fine when, um, when h is a negative number. It could go all the way up to negative 3, although that would be, again, a very 
small cone because it had no height at all, so no volume for that cone. Okay, so we've got a continuous function on a closed bounded interval. The way to optimize is to check the endpoints, uh, 3 and negative 3, and we can see that the volume at those endpoints is 0, so we know that's not what we're looking for. And then check the critical points in the interior. So if we take the derivative to find the critical points, let's see, we have 1 3rd pi, and then to take the derivative of this product, we take the derivative of the first, which is negative h times the second, which is 3 plus h, plus the first, which is 9 minus h squared times the derivative of the second, which is just 1. Now, with a little uh, distributing, I think we can collect like terms. We're going to have negative 6h and minus 2h squared plus 9 minus h squared. So we have, for our derivative, um, negative 3h squared from our 2h squared terms, a negative 6h, and a positive 9. We want to figure out what that, where, is that, where that is 0. So let's factor out a negative 3. If we do that, we'll have negative 3 over 3 times pi. And we'll have h squared. And take a negative 3 of this, it would give you 2h. 2h. And um, take negative 3 of 9, it would leave you negative 3. Now we can see how to factor this. If we use an h plus 3 and an h um, minus 1, that will do it. So we get critical points when h is equal to negative 3. And when h, I'll label these critical points, when h is equal to negative 3 and when h is equal to 1. Well, so let's check our volume at our endpoints. Let's see, negative 3, which just happens to be one of our critical points, too. We have a critical point at 1 and an endpoint of 3. Now in these two cases, uh, we can see that the volume is going to be 0. And when we plug 1 into our volume formula, let's see, what do we have? 9 minus 1 squared would be 8, and 3 plus 1 would be 4. 8 times 4 is 32, so we have 32 pi over 3. So we've got our two endpoints and a critical point in between. We know it's a continuous function on closed bounded intervals, so we know that the max has to be one of these. Obviously, it's this, right? There's our max. So um, we want to find the volume of the largest right um, circular cone that can be inscribed in the sphere of radius 3. Okay, this is the volume of the largest cone. So 32 pi over 3.